silence running. Hello and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Science. It's spring break, which means I have the free time to make a video. So I had a suggestion to make a video on radiation, uh, radiation shielding, and I did store that idea for later, but today's episode will be on heat management of spaceships. It's a pretty fascinating topic for which we actually have some working science. So before I dive into the heat management of spaceships, let's first review the basics of heat transfer. So just like electric currents are driven by potential difference measured in volts, heat transfer is driven by a temperature difference. The greater the temperature difference, the greater the rate of heat transfer. Like electricity travels better through electrically conductive materials, heat travels easier through materials with high thermal conductivity. There are three modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is heat transfer that occurs between solids or within a solid. A good example of that would be heating one end of a copper bar and noticing that the other end is heating up significantly. Convection is heat transfer occurring between a fluid and a solid. The fan and radiator on the CPU of a computer is a good example of convection. The fan forces the air to flow through the fins of the radiator and the heat is transferred from the fins to the air, thus cooling the radiator and the CPU. The last mode of heat transfer is radiation. The main difference between radiation and the two other heat transfer modes is that radiation does not need a temperature gradient. If the air is at the same temperature as the fins when cooling a computer, no heat is exchanged. For a body to emit radiation, however, the only condition is for it to be hotter than zero Kelvin. The total heat transfer for this radiating body will be the net sum of radiation emitted and the radiation received from the surroundings. Now that this basic background on heat transfer is established, let's talk about spaceships. Every module in a ship has inefficiencies. This means that some of the power provided to the modules will not end up being used for the module's purpose. This excess power will be converted to heat, which will raise the temperature of the module over time, if this heat is not vented. Because space is a vacuum, convection or conduction are not options for venting heat from the ship. The only solution is therefore radiation. This is represented in Elite by the radiators on the ship's hull, which are recognizable by their glow. Heat doesn't magically travel from where it is generated in the modules to the radiators, however. Transporting the excess heat from the module to the radiator is no trivial task. My personal theory as to how this is done in the ships is using a liquid metal cooling circuit. The idea of transporting heat using liquid metal is not new. During the Cold War, Studies were made to see if a nuclear-powered plane was feasible. The idea was using the heat generated by a nuclear reactor to replace the heat generated by the combustion of fuel. The simple way of doing this was to circulate the air directly through the core of the reactor. As you can imagine, this system was not exactly sanitary. So a cleaner solution was proposed in which a liquid metal circuit would carry the heat from the reactor to the area where the air from the intakes would be heated up. This indirect system would theoretically solve the issue of contaminating air. A similar circuit could therefore be used in spaceships to carry the heat from the modules to the radiators. Potential liquid metals for this use include mercury, tin, lead, and a sodium-potassium-sodium -sodium alloy. Electromagnetic pumps can be used to move liquid metals that are also electrically conductive. During silent running, we can see the radiators on the ship being covered up one way or another. The temperature inside the ship then starts rising. This mechanic is realistic since if the radiators cannot radiate, the heat builds up inside the ship and the temperatures rise. Finally, heat sinks are a major gameplay mechanic in Elite, allowing pilots to quickly vent the excess heat of their ships into a small heat sink before jettisoning it. There is to this day no way to force heat into an object like it is depicted in the game. As soon as the heat sink becomes as hot as the liquid metal, it will no longer act as a sink. 
Such a small device probably doesn't have the heat capacity to purge the latent heat of an entire ship. So, are heat sinks pure science fiction then? Not entirely. Although physics impose strict limitations as to how heat flows in a system, the world of chemistry opens a lot of possibilities. Chemical reactions can be exothermic or endothermic. Exothermic reactions release heat as the species react. A good example of this is the curing of epoxy resins. On the other hand, endothermic reactions require the help of heat in the surroundings in order to unfold. Reactions such as barium hydroxide octahydrate with ammonium thiocyanate will absorb large quantities of heat as the reaction takes place. This allows the heat sink to maintain a low temperature, which means a greater temperature difference between it and the liquid metal, and therefore a more efficient purge sequence. Once the chemical reaction is complete, the heat sink is jettisoned. On a side note, notice how difficult it is to keep a lock on the ship during silent running. Ships in Elite probably use passive infrared tracking systems, which are rendered useless when the targeted ship stops venting its heat. All this assumes the ships in Elite are extremely well insulated, of course. And I think that'll be it for today. This is a bit of a shorter video, but I hope that despite that you still learned something new. And, uh, well, as always, uh, leave a comment or a like if you like this video. And uh, I'll see you next time.